Welcome mechanics friends. In this video we're going to talk about shear flow. So we find shear flow is useful in analyzing composite beams because it provides us with the shear force per unit length of the member. So basically we want the shear flow to be in units of a force per distance. So that would be so many kips per inch or maybe just pounds per inch or if you're working in SI units, that would be newtons per meter. And so we can look at the previous equation, tau equals VQ over IT, and if we want only force per distance instead of a stress, uh, we can get to the same answer by not dividing by T. So we find little q, the shear flow, will be VQ over I. To take a look at the usefulness of the shear flow equation, uh, we have an example here with two boards uh, that are connected using bolts. So let's go ahead and look at that example and see how we can apply the shear flow equation to help us solve the force acting on each bolt, or the shear force acting on each bolt. In this example, we're going to look at how we calculate the force acting on each connector in a system when we make a composite system. Uh, in this example, we have two uh, one by four boards and we're going to put some load on them. Now, right now they're not connected and so I'm gonna go ahead and stand on the middle here. You see it really deflects, it's really unstable. Well, it's a good thing I can fly and I didn't fall uh, into the abyss here. Uh, anyhow, let's make this beam a little bit safer. Uh, we know that if we can connect the layers, so we can pass the shear forces between the layers, that the whole system will respond better and will have less deflection. Uh, so we're going to do that using some bolts. Uh, we're just going to put them through. I have some holes through here. We're just going to connect the board together. So let me do that real quick. Alright, so now we're ready to uh, stand on this a second time. Let's see if it feels a little bit more safe uh, and it's a little bit more stable. Oh, that's a lot better. All right, so you might be wondering, how does this example apply to shear flow? Uh, well, we want to figure out how much force is now in these bolts. We know that the reason the system is stiffer is because the, the shear, there's some sort of shear going on between these two layers. And then we'll, if these two layers are trying to separate, so the top board is trying to slide to the left while the bottom board slides to the right, these bolts are keeping that action from happening. But how much force are these bolts seeing? Uh, well, we can use the shear flow calculation uh, to determine like how many pounds per inch uh, along the length of the beam these bolts have to hold. Okay, so that little Q is going to be like so many pounds per inch. Say I have a total of eight inches here, you know, pounds per inch times that tributary uh, width is going to give me how much force is acting on this bolt line. Okay, so let's look at our example problem. In this example, the beam is constructed with two 1x4 boards, so this is the exact same problem as we saw in the demonstration. And uh, we want to figure out if the shear force measures 90 pounds, how do we determine the shear force in each bolt? So we're going to use our new shear flow equation, little q equals vq over i. Uh, v is the shear. Shear would be the maximum shear at any point along the length of the beam. Uh, in this case, we're given that it is 90 pounds, so that would be acting somewhere close to the support uh, in our particular demonstration. Capital Q is taken at the point of interest, so this is at the interface over which the connectors cross. So in this case, the bolt crosses between the blue and yellow layer and so that is the value of Q that we'd like to use. Q for uh, the blue separated from the yellow area and that's going to happen to coincide with the neutral axis. 
So if we sketch our neutral axis in there, we'll see that Q in this particular problem is going to be the maximum value for Q that we can obtain at the neutral axis. So Q being the first moment of the area is the summation of Y bar A. So let's go ahead and identify the area that we're using. So again, we're using everything above that plane of the connection. All right, so Y bar, Y bar is the distance from the neutral axis to that shape's center of gravity. So that'll be this distance in here, which for this board is going to be 0 0.75 inches divided by 2. And then the area will be 3.5 inches wide by 0.75 inches high. So going ahead and adding those values to our calculation for Q. We can obtain that Q, the first moment of the area in this particular case, for just the blue board separated from the yellow board, we'll have a value of 0 0.984375 inches cubed. Next we'll look at I. I should always be the moment of inertia about the neutral axis for this entire shape. So that's for this rectangular box shape it will be 1 12th bh cubed. Base is going to be 3.5 inches and then we need to use the total height of the object which is uh, 0.75 inches plus 0.75. So the total height is 1.5 inches and then we cube that. So putting that into our calculators we happen to get 0 0.984375 inches to the fourth. Now, it's just by chance here that I and Q happen to be the same values, so I really didn't like that they happen to come out to be the same, but we have a demonstration, and I'm just doing the real calculations for that demonstration, and just by chance, Q and I happen to be the same. So please just make a note that they're not always the same. Uh, it's just kind of a chance circumstance uh, for this demonstration that they did equal one another in magnitude. All right, so finally, little q, we can go through the calculations. We plug in v, q over i. i is inches to the fourth, q is inches cubed, so that leaves us an inch on the bottom. So now we'll have little q as 90 pounds per inch. So what does this 90 pounds per inch mean? So why do we need a tributary width for the bolt? Well, in our calculations, we determined that the shear flow was 90 pounds per inch. So basically, the shear force between these two boards is 90 pounds per every inch as we move along uh, the length of the beam. Now, we need to figure out how much force this bolt is resisting. Well, obviously, we need to take into account some proportion, some fra you know, fraction of this distance and some fraction of this distance because uh, this bolt has to handle kind of like this distance in here. And as engineers, we assume that we go halfway to the next bolt line uh, and that will be, you know, sort of the tributary width that's applied to this bolt. And then we also go halfway in the other direction. And so for our problem, it's going to be four inches and four inches so the total tributary width for this particular bolt is going to be 8 inches. Alright, so now we know the tributary width that that bolt handles. So let's go ahead and sketch that into our notes. So we're looking at this bolt line, and we say that this bolt will hold half the, you know, the, the, the shear flow from half the distance to the next bolt line. And so that was four inches in either direction. 
So let's go ahead and shade that in and label that as our tributary width. So now we're ready to write an expression for the shear force each bolt is going to have to handle. So I'll call that F bolt. So each bolt needs to handle 90 pounds per inch. And then the bolt in question handles a total of 8 inches. 4 inches to the forward side, 4 inches backwards. So a total of 8 inches of width. And then there is only one bolt at that bolt line. So we divide by just one bolt. So this gives us that the force in this particular bolt would measure 720 pounds per bolt. Now this mainly applies to the bolt closest to the end because uh, remember our shear V is changing along the length of this member the way that we had it loaded as a beam. So uh, we do have to take that into account. I want to write another expression for F bolt. So just rewriting the expression we have that F bolt was little q times the tributary width divided by the number of bolts at that line. So I wanted to rewrite this equation because we'll see in future example problems and homework problems that we look at and maybe uh, real life engineering problems you'll need to come up with this expression so it's important that we know how to do it if we have multiple bolts at that line or different tributary widths. Well I hope you found this example useful and uh, remember that as engineers you really will be superheroes saving the day to making sure our uh, structures, buildings, uh, mechanical pieces don't fall apart on us.